Hey, we've got two huge events coming up in Met Kids. The first is Sun Jam. If you've got kids that are preschool or younger, this is the event for you. Saturday, June 1st from 10 to 12, we are taking over the physical campus of MEC with games and activities that your toddlers through five-year-olds will absolutely love. But don't worry, we've got something for older kids too. Family night on Friday, June 7th. And this year, we're bringing back the big drop. Last time, we dropped a toilet from 30 feet in the air and you got to watch it smash. Now this year, well, you'll just have to come and see all of the crazy things we drop as we talk about how to drop everything and follow Jesus. Now, both of these events will have sweet treats for kids to enjoy. And best of all, both are completely free. You can register for Sun Jam and Family Night in the links on this page. Okay, that's it for me. We hope to see you there. Hey, I'm Keely. This month, we have learned the basics of how to have a friendship with God. Here's a quick recap in case you missed it. Step one to having a relationship with God is to read his words, the Bible. Now, it was originally written in Hebrew and Greek, which uh, we don't read. So get a translation. Now for kids, I suggest the NIRV. And since the Bible is not one book, but it's actually 66 books start right here in the book of Mark. It's all about Jesus. Step two to having a relationship with God is to pray, which means talk to him. Jesus even gave an example prayer for us to say. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. May what you want to happen be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins just as we have forgiven those who sin against us. Keep us from sinning when we are tempted. Save us from the evil one. You can use those words or your own words. The point is to talk to God about anything and everything. Step three to having a relationship with God is to talk about Jesus. Talk about who he is and what he's done. After all, Jesus is God. And if you believe and follow him, let other people know. So what about you? Do you? And if you do, who can you talk to about it? Wow, we have had a great month, but it's not over. Okay, let's say you do all of that. You read the Bible, you pray, talk about Jesus. What then? Here is Story Lab to tell you the final thing you can do to have a relationship with God. Hey, I'm Carter. <laughs> and I'm Zeke. And we're talking about commitment which is making a plan and putting it into practice. Ooh, yeah, good workouts. Oh. Hey, uh, how many, um, how many miles did we uh, run? Uh, one. Really? Yeah. And, and how many, um, how many sit-ups did we do? Uh, like 12. Oh, that's a new record. My man. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Okay, come on, man. One more mile and then we can take a break. Dude, we're exhausted. We can't stop now. Commitment, right? Plus, I want to be strong and look like Captain America. Zeke, you never need to try looking like anyone but you. Oh, thanks, dude. Besides, when it comes to getting fit, Resting is just as important as working out. I don't know, that sounds kind of lazy. Hey, resting is what allows us to do our best. It gives our body a chance to heal and recover. I mean, pushing yourself too hard during a workout can cause serious injury. Okay, but I still need some energy. Oh, Hey, you got any energy drinks? Nah. Plus, most of the ones from the store are terrible for you. You say that like there's another kind. Well, yeah, we can make our own. Really? Well, I'm in. Let's make it. Today, we're making a healthy energy drink substitute that I like to call a summer splash. Okay, but what makes it different from the kind you get at the store? Most of those energy drinks are filled with sugar, caffeine, and artificial flavors. We're gonna make something packed with 
vitamins and electrolytes instead. Electro what? You know how tired you are after you work out? You mean like right now? <laughs> yeah, that's partly because of dehydration. Oh, I know about that. Dehydration is when your body loses more fluids than it takes in. Exactly. When we exercise, we sweat a lot. Sweat is made up of water and salt. Your body sweats to cool you off when you get too hot. So when you sweat a lot, your body loses fluids, causing you to become dehydrated. So basically, your insides dry up, like how a grape turns into a raisin. Spot on. But can't you just fix dehydration by drinking water? Sure, but electrolytes can help. Electrolytes are minerals and salts that help your body absorb fluids, like water, better and faster. Cool, so how does this summer splash work? Care to read the recipe? Yeah, of course. Let's see, for today's tasty experiment, you'll need four cups unsweetened coconut water, one and a third cups of water, two thirds of a cup of lime juice, a quarter of a teaspoon of Himalayan sea salt, and three teaspoons of raw honey. Coconut water is amazing. It's filled with electrolytes and has five times more potassium than most sports drinks. Okay, mix up all your ingredients until the salt dissolves. And enjoy. Simple, easy, and hopefully tasty. Nice summer splash. Thank you. Whew. Ready for the taste test? Oh yeah. Cheers. Oh, that is super refreshing. Oh. I can already feel my energy returning. Told you, you gotta take care of yourself before you can give it your all. Speaking of giving your all, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Mark one of the four Gospels that tell the story of Jesus. Mark was a close friend of Peter and likely recorded Peter's stories of following Jesus for the new believers then and for us today. For three years, Jesus traveled all across Israel and Judah with his disciples. He gave himself completely to helping people and teaching them about God's kingdom. During his travels, Jesus healed the sick, performed the miracles, and gave epic sermons to huge crowds. In everything he did, Jesus lived fully for God and taught others to do the same. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Today's story is about a woman who truly gave everything that she had for God. One day, Jesus was teaching in the temple courtyard as some religious leaders watched. Now, these men wanted to get rid of Jesus because he challenged the way they had always done things. They often looked for ways to trick or trap him. Jesus knew what they were thinking. Watch out for the teachers of the law. They love to have the most important seats. They take over the houses of widows. They say long prayers to show off. A short time later, Jesus went and sat down across from the place at the temple where people came to present their offerings to God. As Jesus watched, some rich men dropped large amounts of money into the offering boxes. The disciples probably noticed too. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, they must really love God. And striking poses, apparently. Just then, a poor widow came up and put two very small copper coins into the offering box. They were only worth a couple of pennies. Jesus called his friends to come to him. Doesn't sound like much, huh? But you have to understand, at that time, most women couldn't work at a job outside the home. They had to depend on their husbands. So a widow, a, a woman whose husband had died, often had very little money or anything else. Jesus knew all about the widow at the temple. That poor widow has put more into the offering box than all the others. They all gave a lot because they're rich. She gave even though she is poor. She put in everything she had. That was all she had to live on. Wow, that makes two little coins seem like a million bucks. Jesus looked beyond outside appearances. 
He knew that it was easy for the rich man to give lots of money, they'd never miss it. But the poor widow gave up everything that she had to honor God. And we still remember and tell her story today. The end. So, even though this widow gave the least amount of money, she actually gave the most. Exactly. Giving isn't always about what or how much you give. It's about the heart behind it. So what's our part in the story? Well, the widow gave everything she had to God. Even though it wasn't much, she didn't keep anything back. And we can do the same. Sometimes that could be giving money, but often it's how we give other things we have, like, like our time or a good attitude. So say my mom tells me to clean my room. Instead of just chucking some shirts in the hamper, I could actually put things away. That's a good one. Or if you're hanging out with a friend, you could share your favorite toys and games instead of just the ones you don't care about. That's right. See, if you keep your eyes open, you can find ways to live fully for God in everything you do, whether it's at home, at school, or anywhere. Jesus once told his followers, anything you do for one of the least important of these brothers and sisters of mine, you do for me. So anytime we do stuff for other people, it's like we're doing it for God. I think you got it. See you next time. So here's the thing. Practice living for God. Speaking of practice, are you ready to get back training and finish that last mile? You know it. When you hear a story from the Bible, ask three questions. What does it show me about God? God doesn't just want a part of you. He wants all of you. He wants you to live your whole life for Him. And the best way to live your life for God is to do kind things for the people around you. What does this show me about me? You were made to live for God by loving the people around you. What should I do now? Live your life for God. Ask yourself, how can I serve God today by loving other people? And then, go and do it. Jesus once told a story. So then, everyone who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a wise man. He builds his house on the rock. The rain comes down, the water rises, the winds blow and beat against that house, but it does not fall. It is built on the rock. But everyone who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man. He builds his house on sand. The rain comes down, the water rises, the wind blows and beats against that house, and it falls with a loud crash. Read the Bible, pray, talk about Jesus, and then go and do what he says. Serve and love the people around you, at school, in your home, everywhere. Look for ways to live for God. Think about that as this next song plays. I know you hear